Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Uncle Matt's Cookery Lessons. This week, something a bit different. This is a collaboration video with a couple of YouTube friends of mine, My Spanish Kitchen and James Mackinson, and I really hope you enjoy this. I'm so happy to be doing this with you guys right now, like two of my favourite chefs and YouTubers, and it's just like, I don't know, it's, it's very exciting. For those people who are coming to this video from our various channels, they may not know who we all are, so we'll just do some introductions. I'm Jim, I'm from My Spanish Kitchen. Uh, I'm Matt, uh, also known as Uncle Matt, in my cookery lessons. Yeah. And I'm James Makinson, and obviously my channel is under my name, James Makinson, where I cook uh, all the things that I know how to cook. So. <laughs> <laughs> you, you might be wondering what we're going to be doing. So we've got this three-way collaboration, and I want to kind of preface this by saying... This is not a challenge. It's one of those things that we all agree that it's like a bit of a dirty word that we don't like to do because obviously with challenges, it's like there's almost going to be a winner. So what we decided to do was um, basically like learn from each other as well. And um, we're going to take one simple ingredient. We've all got the same ingredient. The one ingredient that we chose for um, this is going to be one whole chicken, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask Matt, first of all, um, kind of like, you know, what, what's on your mind? What do, what do you think you could, you're going to do? Well, I had a couple of ideas. I, I definitely sort of decided to go down my French training background. Uh, you guys obviously go towards the Spanish. Um, I was even going to do a classic coco van. Mm. But what I've decided to do in the end is a technique called galantine, which is basically boning out the whole chicken. So rather than cutting in through the breasts, you go in through the back, bone it out, okay. stuff it and wrap it and either you can roast it or poach it. Um, I've decided, though, well, I'm erring. I can't, I can't quite make up my mind, but I'm thinking I'm going to also, as a, you guys, with the Spanish thing, is go towards a Spanish style. So oh, okay. that's what I'm thinking. I might, you know, we might get a bit of chorizo sausage in mm. there, you know, we'll see. along those lines. But um, as I say, still... Haven't exactly decided, but it's de definitely going to be the, the chicken guarantee. That sounds absolutely fantastic. And, and yes, it does. And James, what you, what's what's going through your mind? What what do you think you're going to do? Oh uh, well, okay. Actually, that's a little difficult because the easiest thing to do if this is going to be on a Sunday, we normally have a roast, but then that's just a bit boring. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a risotto. I'm going to well impart. Mm -hmm. Part of the recipe is going to be the risotto. I'm going to use the bones for stock or make and reduce that stock to then make the risotto. And then I was thinking about doing a chicken rollout. So you basically, you're going to try and strip the chicken down and then use it in like multiple different ways instead of like just one thing. Yeah? Exactly. So for the rollout, I'm going to sous vide the best I can because I don't have the machine. And then I'm going to make a few purees and then we'll see what happens. Wow. Okay, that, 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 sounds, that sounds absolutely yeah. awesome. Yeah. Um, well, speaking of boring <laughs> and, 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 some, <laughs> and, some, and Sunday roasts, what I think I am going to do, and this is mainly because, like, here in Spain, um, as, as James will know, is like uh, we have a lot of uh, rotisserie um, shops. So I think what I'm going to do is kind of do a rotisserie style chicken. But do it in the oven, and I think to do that, I'm going to um, I'm going to spatch cook the chicken, and that should give me a nice even cook throughout the chicken. But then I think I'm going to use some kind of like herby butter or something like that under the skin to try and make sure the um, chicken stays moist throughout. And I might try a technique. This, this is going to be a little bit experimental for me. I've never really done this before, but I'm I'm, I'm going to try and do maybe if I've got time a 24 hour dry brine process because i hear that by doing a dry brine that it, it helps like break down some of the uh well it pulls the moisture out of the skin so we get a nice yeah. crispy skin and it also kind of helps the meat tenderize and stay moist as well if you like this format and you want to see it again also leave us some comments down below and maybe with some suggestions on what you want us to cook in the future yeah yeah definitely it's always nice yeah. to get suggestions because you, you can you don't have to do all the thinking yourself. No, exactly, <laughs> exactly. But, but go easy on us as well, yeah? Go easy on us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No <laughs> beef Wellington. Yeah. <laughs> ingredients that we can get. Yes, ingredients that we can get, yeah? So, 
off we go. Let, let, let's watch the videos now and see what everyone did. All right. Cheers. Cheers. Sounds good. So first things first, it's going to make the stuffing. That is a shop-bought packet stuffing. Add hot water to it. That's that simple stuff. But those are some chorizo flavored pork sausages which i've just removed the skins that is a whacking load of spinach that once you wilt it down it doesn't seem very much that was like a whole packet leave that in a colander to drain now the stuffing mix just cooled down a bit i can work those sausages into it and then i'm just gonna onto a bit of kitchen paper goes the spinach and those two items whilst they're still a bit warm going in the fridge to cool down now let's Bone out this bird, first of all removing the wishbone, so those are just in there. Just get your fingers in there and you pull it out either in one go or it, mine broke and it came out in two pieces, but the wing bone, the wishbone, I apologise, is removed. This is the wings, so I'm just en removing the ends. The, the flats of the wings are coming off, the drumettes are going to remain on. Now we flip this bird over so we cut along the back. There's a couple of points there where you have to cut around with a knife. There is a technique where you can do a lot of this work with your fingers, just sort of prying the flesh away. I quite like to use the knife, and that's a standard butcher's knife, but any sort of strong bladed knife will do. So just cut in between the socket where the wings join the carcass, and then I should have done that line along the backbone at the beginning. It would have made it a bit easier. So that's going around the oyster meat. That's where the thigh joins and around again along the, the backbone, around the oyster meat again, and then you're gonna expose the sockets where the thighs join again. There's the socket, get through that. The whole point you do, what you're doing here is you're trying to take out the cleanest bone you can whilst leaving most of the flesh away from the bone. You know, That's how it's done, that's the idea. So. What I do is, when I'm working here, if I feel a bit uncomfortable in one position, I just sort of turn the bird around and cut away from myself, then turn it back. But once you've got the actual bone part separate and you've gone through the sockets, you can actually pull out that carcass. That You're left there with some skin and the meat. This here is the carcass, but we've still got the little tender fillets attached to it. So I'm just going to take those off with a knife. Just again, following the principle of trying not to leave any flesh on the bone, the carcass, that goes into a freezer bag. You make soup or stock gravy with that. Don't throw that away. That's gold dust. There's a little um, tendons attached to these fillets. So if you hold it with a clean cloth or that's a clean J cloth, you can scrape that away. So this is at the wing end. We're cutting around the wing bone and then we're going to scrape down. So this is where that J the clean J cloth comes in handy. You sort of hold, hold everything still while you're doing it. Get a good grip. That's the wing bone removed. You've been able to pull it all the way out because you removed the drumette part of it. Sorry, you removed the flat. The, this is now the legs. This is a little bit different. You cut around the ball point, the ball socket for the thigh, scrape it down to, let's call it the knee of this chicken, but then cut around that because you don't want to cut through that socket you're, you're going to leave this um the two parts of the bone connected whilst you then scrape down as far as you possibly can but as we've left the feet part on well not the actual feet but, but we haven't cut through the skin you're going to re insert the leg it's a bit weird a bit gross but what we're going to do is we're going to break the bone that knife was wrong because i've got my bigger knife use the blunt end of it and give it a couple of wax to snap the bone and you can pull the bone out. That way the leg at the end, the foot end, is still complete. So we're going to be able to stuff our stuffing right down in the leg. That's the other one removed. So all this is now a boneless piece of chicken. It's just the flesh and the skin. What I want to do here is I want to try to create an even layer. So the, the parts of the breast are a bit high up. So we're going to cut those bits off horizontally, use the tenders to create basically fill in all the bits where there was skin so we've got an even layer of flesh it's time to give it a bit of a season and apply the stuffing now I'm putting my stuffing as I said earlier right the way down really pack it down into the legs and then even your stuffing out over the rest of it try to keep it as even as possible put a little bit down there that's in between that's the uh, the wing bits now the now dried and cooled down spinach that is some um, not chorizo sorry Apologies. That's manchego cheese and some pine nuts. 
Now fold both ends up to the middle. Now I probably have got a little bit too much stuffing, especially up at the, the neck end there. So we're gonna see later on I used a bit too much, but we're gonna get we're gonna get away with it. It's fine. So now turn this thing over and just do a little tidy up, tuck in that flapper skin there. I'm gonna cross the legs and now we're gonna get our butcher's twine. By the way, you need a lot of butcher's string for this video for this technique. So just go around the feet while you cross them and I'm not very really that good at knots, so I just do like a triple knot. Then you realize you're right-handed, so turn it around the other way. Now this technique is great. Loop it a couple of times around your wrist, create like a lasso kind of knot, and then as you pull it backwards and forwards, it will self-lock. It's a really clever knotting technique. So again, double loop around your wrist, feed that along to a couple of inches further along and just keep working your way like you see me doing here, speed it up until you get right to the end. And then you're gonna roll this thing over, be really gentle with it. And this is where we see, okay, yeah, a little bit too much stuffing in there, but we're just gonna persevere and everything is absolutely fine. But feel free to not put a little bit less in than I did. So each one of those loops, we're gonna go past it with a string, which we've now obviously cut the string at the other end. And well, you can see what I'm doing, go past it, loop it underneath and then back along. So it will now you get to the end where you can tie the piece of string that you had left over around the feet. And again, I just go for a triple knot because I don't know any others. And then just remove that excess bit of string. Delicately roll it back over Pretend that you didn't put too much stuffing in anyway, and we're ready to roast this thing. I'm using some carrots to create a little trivet for it onto a tray, bit of olive oil, bit of seasoning, and that's gonna go in in the oven. I've got mine set to 190 C, that's 374 Fahrenheit. After one hour, I was almost there. Give it a little baste because, you know, that just looks great, doesn't it? Uh, it needed a few more minutes, so I wanted to get it make sure it was 100, uh, sorry, 72 centigrade plus. I think that's got to be like at least 165 Fahrenheit, and who doesn't want to do that? Mm. Uh, it's totally naughty, but I can't resist. Removing the string, cutting this thing in half to give you one awesome cross-section. Anyone from binging with Babiches fans, you'll enjoy that. And ready to carve this thing and serve it. I decided to serve mine with some patatas bravas and uh, with the bravas sauce as well there they are going into a bowl that's the bravas sauce and I'm going to hand you back over to me for the tasting okay um, that's turned out rather nice isn't it very attractive um, let's have a taste mm. that is lovely that is my interpretation of the chicken galantine so anyone that's interested in just cooking in general, but maybe specifically some Spanish food. Um, you can do a lot worse than check out My Spanish Kitchen and James Mackinson. They, those guys really have absorbed themselves into the culture and the food, and uh, they produce absolutely fantastic content. Anyway, thank you very much. Catch you next time coming soon. Bye.